Hey guys, so let's say we have one over one minus sine of x minus one over one plus sine of x. And let's say this equals two secant uh, x times tan of x. And so as you already, already know, our goal here is to get the left side to look like the right side or vice versa. Usually you wanna start with the more complicated side. And so in this case, the left side appears to be the more complicated side. But our overall goal is to make the left side here look like the right side. So uh, when you get a problem like this and it's you, on one of the sides, you have two fractions that are either being added or subtracted together. Uh, one of the ways that I like to approach these is to just add them or subtract them so that you get one, so that you're just dealing with one fraction. So you might not know exactly where the problem is gonna take you, but in, you know, if you do enough of these problems, you start to pick up on those patterns. And so every time you see two fractions uh, on one of these sides, it's best to get that into one fraction. So let's, let's give this a shot. So I'll do this in blue here. Uh, to add these together, or in this case, subtract them, we need to get a common denominator. So I'm assuming, you know, everyone who's watching this has that, uh, knows how to do that. So in this case, I'm gonna take on the left side, I'm gonna multiply top and bottom by one plus sine of x over one plus sine of x. Now on the right side, well, I'm just gonna get rid of this for now so I have some room. We'll multiply top and bottom by one minus sine of x, one minus sine of x, okay. So if we actually multiply these together, we get one plus sine of x over one plus sine of x. And actually I won't multiply the denominator yet. I'll keep that separated for a second. One minus sine of x. So again, I'm just multiplying, technically distributing the one here over one plus sine of x times one minus sine of x. So now they have a common denominator. Now we can add them across, or in this case, I keep saying add, but in this case we can subtract them. So I'm keeping everything in parentheses too. That always helps stay organized. So let's actually do this. Uh, and again, I'm gonna do this in baby steps so you can see exactly how I'm going through this. So we'll say one plus sine of x, keeping that in parentheses here, minus one minus sine of x, all over the same common denominator, one plus sine of x times one minus sine of x. Okay, so at this point I'll use yellow here. <laughs> Excuse me. And now we can get the, and I can actually simplify the numerator. The ones cancel. You can see that one minus one, those cancel. So that's, we're just left with zero here. And then we have sine of x minus negative sine of x. Again, we're in parentheses. So it's always, I always like putting things in parentheses because, you know, for exactly like situations like this, sometimes it's easy to forget that you need to distribute that negative to everything that's on the inside. Um, so it's sine of x minus negative sine of x, which turns it into a sine of x plus sine of x. So we end up getting two sine of x on top all over. Now I'm actually going to foil the denominator here. So at this point, uh, and I've just done this a bunch of times, so I, I know what this is going to simplify to, but this right here is actually going to simplify pretty nicely if we foil it. Uh, you'll recognize that we can use the difference of squares formula to actually simplify this into something pretty nice. This is going to turn in, yeah, into one minus sine of x squared. So this looks great. Uh, and if you're wondering how I got this into one minus sine of x squared, you can actually do the math. I just used a formula here to quickly simplify that. But if you actually distribute, you actually foil here, one times one is just one, one times negative sine of x is negative sine of x, plus positive sine of x times one is just sine of x. So those, the sine of x uh, cancels out here. And then you have the minus sine of x uh, times, um, or sine of x times negative sine of x, which turns into negative sine of x squared. So that's where we're getting, uh, that's what this simplifies to in the denominator here. And again, if you do enough of these problems, you'll, you'll really start to pick up on those patterns. You know, right away, and before I even attempted the problem, I saw those, those two factors right there. And I knew, I knew when I added these fractions together, we get something really nice like this. Now I say it's really nice because uh, we have to go back to our trig identities list in order to see that we can substitute in something for this. So if you remember from that sheet, let me see if I can grab another color here. Just do a little 
I'll write out that property or identity in the bottom left here. But you guys should know this by now, but we get sine square root of x plus cosine of square root of x, this equals one. So you should recognize at this point that if we have one minus sine square root of x, that's just, you know, we can subtract the sine square root of x, subtract the sine square root of x, and then we're left with cosine square root of x equals one minus sine square root of x. So that's exactly what we have over here. So what we're gonna do here is just substitute the cosine of x squared in for that, for the one minus sine squared of x. And this makes the problem really nice or a lot easier to work with. So this turns it into two sine of x over cosine squared x. So now I erased the problem earlier, but let's, let's rewrite it out. So we got two sine x over cosine squared of x. Two sine of x over cosine squared x. And when I initially wrote out the problem, we were, this, you know, all of this was set equal to, I wrote it over here. Our goal was to make it look like two secant x times tangent of x. So we're almost there. Our mission again, we're, we're at this point, we just need to get it to look like this so that we can actually prove this, these trigonometric identities. Um, okay, so, you know, again, I, the more problems you work through, you'll start to pick up these patterns and you know exactly how to move through these question types. Um, but if you're going through this for the first time, it is kind of difficult because you're not as familiar and you're not quick to use those trig identities. Um, but always have those trig identities out with you so you can constantly refer to those. Because the more you look at those, the more you work through these questions and refer to that, that page, that, those, those list of uh, trig identities, the quicker you're gonna start being able to get through these questions. Uh, and the faster you'll see which identities you need to use. Okay, so in this point, I see we have two sine up top over cosine squared x. And I know we need a secant of x and a tangent of x. So maybe in knowing that we need to get, get it to look like this, let's see if we have the right amount of information to be able to do this. For example, we know we need a secant of x. So what is secant of x using our trig identity sense? Well, we can recognize that that is just one over cosine of x. Same thing with the tangent. You might be more familiar with this one. This is just sine of x over cosine of x if we're using those, those trig identities here. And it doesn't quite look like we have that, but in fact we do. We just need to get it to kind of look like this. So what I mean by that is I'm going to rewrite this, do this in a different color. I'm going to rewrite this as two sine of x over cosine of x times cosine of x. So I'm just breaking up the cosine of x so you can visually see how I'm, how I'm thinking about this. And so again, there's the sine of x over cosine of x that we need, and it, here we have it down here. So it's right there. It was just kind of hiding in this, in this equation or in this uh, expression up top. And we technically also have a one over cosine of x. We got the cosine of x down in the denominator. So we technically have this secant of x hiding in this expression as well. So what I'm going to do is, and I'll keep doing this in baby steps just so you can kind of see how I'm thinking about this. When I see this, I visualize two times sine of x over cosine of x times one over cosine of x. So now at this point, it might be really easy for you to see, and I keep changing colors here. If I can kind of group those there, see that they're grouped. Now we're just substituting these in. So one over cosine of x, that equals secant of x. So I'll do this in red to finish this. So that can be turned into secant of x. Sine, over, uh, sine of x over cosine of x just equals tangent, so I'm gonna substitute that in. And then of course we got the two in the numerator, that just stays up there. And there we go. So we proved that this, what we started with on the left side, so if we go back here, this is what we started with, and it was kind of messy, but that's what we started with. And we, you know, through a bunch of steps, we we're eventually able to get it to be uh, what was on the right side of our equation that we were starting with. Um, so again, it's just takes practice to really get the hang of these uh, question types. And for the most part, teachers ask the same questions over and over again. So they're not going to give you anything super crazy on a test. In fact, they might get you something, give you something that looks kind of like this, but just maybe using um, slightly different numbers uh, or what have you. Maybe they were 
uh, we're adding these fractions together. Um, so it's usually variations of that. 